Exterior. This section covers the exterior of the home, which includes the exterior wall covering material, doors, steps, windows, and surface drainage, among many other components of the exterior that is within the scope of a home inspection. The exterior of a home is slowly deteriorating and aging. The sun, wind, rain, and temperatures are constantly affecting it. Your job is to check the building's exterior for its condition. The inspector shall inspect the exterior wall covering materials, the eaves, soffits, and fascia, a representative number of windows, all exterior doors, flashing and trim, adjacent walkways and driveways, stairs, steps, stoops, stairways, and ramps, railings, guards, and handrails, and vegetation, surface drainage, retaining walls, and grading of the property where they may adversely affect the structure due to moisture intrusion. Exterior wall covering material. The inspector shall describe the type of exterior wall covering materials. Many inspectors start with a walk around the structure, taking notes as well as photos, and looking closely at the structure for walls out of plumb, whether a chimney is leaning, etc., and generally getting the feel for the home. Many things that are observed outside are clues to greater issues with the property. The exterior itself can be very complicated, with multiple components and systems. It is easy to walk around the house and simply check the exterior of the foundation and structural supports. Exterior walls above the foundation may be covered with a variety of materials, including wood siding, aluminum, vinyl, asbestos cement shingles, plywood, stucco, brick, and stone masonry, or an exterior insulation and finish system. Exterior wooden components. Check the painted surfaces for peeling, blistering, and checking. Paint-related problems may be due to vapor pressure beneath the paint, improper paint application, or excessive paint buildup. Wooden components are susceptible to rot, particularly when they are installed near grade or just under the roof line. For example, exterior flashings and trim are typically problematic issues even on an otherwise well-maintained home. It is not unusual to see trim rotted away due to poor installation of flashings. It is unusual to find an old wooden garage door without rot. The attachment of any exterior component should be checked, particularly decks, stoops, steps, and stairs, many of which show signs of inadequate attachment and poor flashing. Clearance. Check the distance between the bottom of wood elements and the grade or ground surface. In locations that have little or no snow, the distance should be no less than eight inches. In locations with significant lasting snow, the bottom of wood elements should be no less than eight inches above the average snow depth. Check for landscaping materials such as wood chips and mulch that are piled up against the house wall. Eaves, soffit, and fascia. Damaged soffits, horizontal surfaces under the eaves, can allow snow or rain to be blown into the attic, damaging the insulation, ceilings, and walls. Fascia boards, vertical roof trim sections, can be damaged, allowing the moisture from rain and snow into the attic and atop interior walls. Check the exterior walls and trim for deterioration developing beneath the eaves of pitched roofs that have no overhang or gutters. Exterior windows and doors. All exterior doors should be inspected during the home inspection. A representative number of windows can be inspected from the exterior because many windows are simply out of reach and not accessible to be inspected up close. Windows and doors are the most complex elements of your home's exterior and they require monitoring. A house is required to have a main egress door. The required door must be a side hanged door and it must be at least three feet wide and six feet and eight inches tall. Other doors do not need to meet these minimum dimensions. They can be of any size and need not be a swinging type. All egress doors shall be readily openable from the inside without the use of a tool or key or special knowledge or effort. Stairs and guards. Stairways are one of the most hazardous areas of a home and stairfalls are often fatal. 
We recommend learning the standards and requirements of a stairway and ramp in detail so that when you are on an inspection, you will be able to recognize defects quickly and report them concisely. We recommend referring to the stairway section of the How to Inspect the Attic, Insulation, Ventilation, and Interior course. Any stairway with four or more risers should have a handrail on at least one side. The handrail height should be at least 34 inches and not more than 38 inches. The minimum riser height is 4 inches and the maximum is 7 and 3 quarter inches. The minimum tread depth is 10 inches. Inspector shall report. According to the standards of practice, the inspector shall report as in need of correction any improper spacing between intermediate balusters, spindles, and rails. The design strength of a guard should resist a 200-pound concentrated load applied at any point in any direction along the handrail or the top of the guard. All decks and porches, including those with insect screening, landings, balconies, mezzanines, galleries, ramps, or raised floor surfaces located more than 30 inches above the floor or ground, should have guards. A guard is necessary at those elevated floor areas because a fall from that height can result in injury. The minimum height of the horizontal guard is 36 inches. Open sides of stairways with a total rise of more than 30 inches above the floor or ground should have guards not less than 34 inches in height. Horizontal guards at raised floor areas, balconies, and porches should have intermediate rails or ornamental enclosures that do not allow passage of a 4-inch diameter sphere. The triangular area formed by a tread, riser, and guard should not allow passage of a sphere 6 inches in diameter. The opening at guards on the sides of stair treads should not allow the passage of a sphere 4 and 3 eighths inches in diameter. Surface drainage. Home inspectors may also check the lot, the ground surrounding the house, and the land at the property. Home inspectors may report on trees that pose a threat to the structure, retaining walls that are damaged or rotten, footpaths and walkways that present a trip hazard, and the general topography of the site and its ability to drain surface water. There should be adequate slopes of the land and ground around the property. Slope refers to the land around the house that is graded at an angle. The slopes of the ground should be directed toward appropriate and approved drainage devices that are capable of carrying concentrated runoff. The ground should slope a minimum of 6 inches within the first 10 feet. There are exceptions to this rule when drains and swales are provided. Your task should include walking the perimeter of the house and the surrounding land. Verify that the site appears to be adequately sloped away from the house. Detached Garage As a side note, InterNACHI's Residential Standards of Practice does not require inspectors to evaluate detached garages. But attached garages and attached carports are included within the standards of practice. Many home inspectors inspect the detached garage as part of their exterior inspection, exceeding the standards of practice. Some inspectors are required to include detached garages in their general home inspections as mandated by their state or province. In this case, inspectors should note the same types of defects as described for the home's exterior structure in general. InterNACHI provides useful guidelines for inspecting garages and garage door openers in its How to Inspect the Exterior course. Not required. The inspector is not required to inspect or operate screens, storm windows, shutters, awnings, fences, outbuildings, or exterior accent lighting, inspect items that are not visible or readily accessible from the ground, including window and door flashing, inspect or identify geological, geotechnical, hydrological, or soil conditions, inspect recreational facilities or playground equipment, inspect seawalls, break walls, or docks, Inspect erosion control or earth stabilization measures. Inspect for safety type glass. Inspect underground utilities. Inspect underground items. Inspect wells or springs. Inspect solar, wind, or geothermal systems. Inspect swimming pools or spas. 
inspect wastewater treatment systems, septic systems, or cesspools, inspect irrigation or sprinkler systems, inspect drain fields or dry wells, or determine the integrity of multiple pane window glazing or thermal window seals. Again, the inspector is not required to do any of those things. Exterior courses. We have a few courses related to inspecting the exterior. We recommend the Fundamentals of Inspecting the Exterior course and a course that's part of our certification program, How to Inspect the Exterior course. 